Mr. Keir, thank you so much for joining me to discuss this case. Now, if we could just quickly sort of flash back to the hysteria that engulfed society in 2020 with pandemic lockdown measures and, of course, uh, mandates and, and the gathering restrictions, can you walk us through exactly what these churches, pastors and elders were accused of being in violation of? Well, if people remember, uh, there were the waves of COVID and the lockdowns followed that. And so uh, when this all initially happened uh, back in March of 2020, uh, both of uh, our clients' uh, churches complied. Uh, but then when winter came around and another round of lockdowns began, uh, which were particularly strict and uh, the province went into a shutdown phase, uh, both churches decided that they couldn't in good conscience close their doors to their parishioners. And so they continued to hold services. Uh, the Aylmer Church of God uh, started holding outdoor services eventually. Um, and the uh, Trinity Bible Chapel was holding indoor services, but uh, notably they had a, uh, a under normal circumstances, a, a capacity of 900 people in their hall. Uh, and at times they were limited to having 10 people indoors. Uh, so they went ahead with holding services. Uh, they received uh, police attention as a result of that. Charges were laid. Uh, fines were made against them. At, at one point, uh, Trinity Bible Chapel's locks were changed on them, so they were locked out of their own church. Uh, and then as a result, both churches brought a challenge to the uh, the lockdown provisions, and uh, their their matters were joined and heard together. And now here in the Ontario court, so kind of that, that middle ground of, of courts, Justice Pomerantz denied the church's challenge and upheld what is being called violations of freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. What merits was this being appealed on to Canada's highest court? I'm reading that there was improper assessment, uh, misapplication of the legal test. I think that that's in regards to the demonstrable justification of these measures etc cetera, etc cetera. can you elaborate a little bit there on where justice may have gone wrong well um your viewers may or may not know but uh when someone char uh, challenges the government for infringing their rights first you have to show that the right was infringed uh, and then the government has to justify the infringement uh, and so we had arguments at both steps uh, so in terms of the rights being infringed uh, something that Justice Pomerantz did is uh, she looked at the infringement to the freedom of religion and she found that there was one. Uh, but then she decided that the other infringements uh, to freedom of expression, freedom of peaceful assembly, uh, freedom of association, all of those could be, quote, subsumed under the heading of freedom of religion. And so our argument was that doing that failed to properly capture the infringement that happened to uh, our clients' rights. Uh, especially peaceful assembly. These these were gathering restrictions, and to assemble, it's a synonym basically. It means to uh, to gather together, to assemble together, and this is what their religious beliefs ask of them. And so, uh, when we get to that next stage uh, and looking at whether or not the government has justified what they've done, uh, the court doesn't get a full picture. Uh, we argued if they're essentially just sweeping those other rights under the heading of religion alone. Uh, and then with respect to the the justification that the government provided, uh, what was interesting in this case is it wasn't just our experts disagreeing with the government's experts. One of the government's own experts, uh, an expert in infectious disease, actually agreed with us that uh, outdoor gatherings are basically safe and they're not justified from a public health perspective because it would be better to give people opportunities to gather outside so that they don't gather inside. Uh, so despite that, um, the the court found that the government had experts that were uh, able to speak to reasons for why they did what they did. And in the word of Justice Pomerantz, uh, she, she, had, she was not uh, going to be an armchair epidemiologist. And so she decided that because the government was able to show the advice that they were leaning on, uh, she had to defer to that. And so she uh, so she found that the infringements were justified. Uh, we appealed that up to the Court of Appeal. Uh, ultimately, they they agreed with the lower court. Uh, and so we took these two issues uh, or tried to take them up to the Supreme Court. And they have since refused to hear the arguments of these merits. What, at the end of the day, what kind of implication does that have on constitutional freedoms like freedom of religion, uh, freedom to assemble, to gather 
moving forward in Canada? Well, because the Supreme Court, uh, as you can imagine, receives uh, many thousands of requests to hear appeals, uh, there's a first stage where you have to seek leave to appeal. And so the court refused that. Uh, they don't give reasons for that. Uh, and so it, it just sort of puts an end to this matter. Uh, essentially, what the Court of Appeal said is the final word here in Ontario. Uh, the same day, the Court of Appeal uh, denied leave to appeal uh, coming out of BC from a very similar challenge, churches facing lockdowns. Uh, and so in both cases, the, the Court of Appeal's decisions become the last word. So in terms of our, our constitutional rights, uh, we're left with the findings of the, the Court of Appeal affirming uh, Justice Pomerantz's decision, uh, which worrisomely may have the effect of eroding some of the strong protections that we're supposed to have in our in, uh, constitutional uh, analysis. So, for example, uh, the Charter says that infringements have to be demonstrably justified uh, in a free and democratic society. Uh, and... Early on, you know, if we're going back to the, the the very first court cases looking at this in the 80s and 90s, the court took a very strong stance uh, and emphasized that word demonstrable, that the government has to lead evidence to show why what they did uh, was necessary and why it infringed rights as little as possible. Uh, but what we have coming out of this is that the government's own evidence seemed to undermine their reasons for doing this. And really the only standard that they were held to is that they had to show some experts that were able to provide an opinion uh, supporting what the government did. 